Hey everybody, my name is Sean. I am the music director and finance admin here at SBC. So glad you're joining us uh, this week for Home Church. Uh, a lot going on this week, actually. So uh, if you haven't heard, Fresno County's in the red tier, which is good, meaning we could begin our indoor gatherings once again. We are super excited about that. Hope you're able to join us. If you're not able to, we completely understand. These home churches will still be available for you, so please use them. Um, Enjoy the music and listen to the message that Pete Jacob and Scott bring each week. It's very valuable stuff. So just so much going on. Uh, we see a lot of movement happening, a lot of things going on in our country, in our world right now. Um, so I just pray that we can all stay focused on Christ and um, the one thing that can definitely unite us in these trying times. Um, so I hope you all have a good week. Um, if you have any questions or anything... Um, regarding the events that we may be doing or our gatherings or home church or any questions for us as the pastors, staff, or elders, please just contact us. We'd be happy to answer any questions. Um, with that, I'll go ahead and pray us into our, uh, our service for this week. Jesus, we are so thankful we are able to meet, whether in person or um, digitally, God. Um, Thank you for all you provide for us, Lord, and just in these times where it seems like there's just so much bad and so much confusion and division, God, you are the one that can truly unite us and just bring peace and love uh, amongst your people, God. I pray that we can we can be those people and uh, people will look at us in our church and say there's something different about us, that they love the Lord and they want to serve and that they want to bring together people in Christ's name. Lord, we give you this time and we just pray for... Uh, uh, wellness and health for all of us, our family and friends, God. And just thank you again so much for all you've given us, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen.
Nobody ever wants to be a messenger of bad news, especially if it's terrible. Nobody ever wants to be the messenger of just 
awful news. It's worse, too, if, if you know that this uh, bad news, this, this terrible news is going to ruin a, a career or bring conflict to family or friend relationships. But when it's good news, when it's good news, everybody wants to be the messenger. Everybody wants to let the secret out. In fact, it's even hard to keep the secret in. Sometimes it's almost a kind of agony. But when you're able to declare it, when you're able to let others know about it, it's, it's a thrill. Since the beginning of um, Ephesians, our sermon series, Paul has been kind of showing us this clear picture of God's story, of how God planned it, how God the Son paid for it, and how through the Holy Spirit he preserved it. And Paul is telling us this, this amazing story as if he is the messenger of this good news. The news that was once hidden, which he called the mystery. But now this very mystery has now been revealed. And, and this news is, is so great, it captivated Paul first. And then it compelled him into ministry. The mystery demanded his ministry. The good news, he had to tell the secret he couldn't keep it in. The mystery was Jesus died and rose from death. And through Jesus, God extended his grace and his mercy to all, specifically the Gentiles. You see, the Gentiles now have favor along with the Jews, all because of Jesus Christ, that in Christ now both Jew and Gentile are now one fellow heirs, members of the same body. Both are seen as equal in God's eyes through his son, Jesus Christ. And because of this grace, love and forgiveness and revelation was given to Paul, Paul responded by living a life of being a messenger of the mystery. Today, in our time, it, it, we're just going to pick up on what we talked about last week. Last week was verses 1 through 7 in chapter 3. Today is going to be in verses 8 through 13. Um, most of the time we would probably teach this in one sitting, but man, this is such a deep and uh, a text and a beautiful text, and we wanted to break it up into two. And so what I'm going to do today is I want to read verses um, 1 of chapter 3, which should remind us of what we talked about last week and then also help us for our time here today. So chapter 3, if you have your Bibles, chapter 3, verses 1 through 7, then we'll begin in our text for today. For this reason, I, Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, on behalf of you Gentiles, assuming that you have heard the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you. How the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I have written briefly. When you read this, you perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to the sons of men in the other generations, as it is now revealed, been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. This mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel, verse 7, and of this gospel. I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace, which was given to me by the working of his power to me. Verse eight is where we're at to me, though I'm the very least of all the saints. This grace was given. Now, what we see here in verse seven first is Paul's honored and privileged that he was afforded this wonderful gift from God, a gift of grace and that was only given through the person and work of Christ. Now, the question is to what? Why was this gift given? Well, we saw last week it was to proclaim the mystery. The secret that was once hidden is now all available to all to hear but notice Paul's humility in verse 8. Look at it again. To me, though I am the very least of all saints, this grace was given. What we see here is Paul considered himself unworthy. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, he says he refers to himself as the chief of sinners. Remember, as a persecutor of Christians, Paul was a persecutor of Christians. So he had to think in his mind, there's no way God would use me. There's no way God would love and, and forgive me. There's no way that God would accept me for what I've done. But God, 
but God does. God offers grace to Paul, which is undeserved love. God loves Paul and reveals to Paul the mystery. Because of that, Paul's in awe of that. And in turn, look at verse 8. Look at the end of the rest of verse 8. He says he's here to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. God saved Paul and Paul responded by being a messenger. God revealed the mystery to Paul and Paul became a, a megaphone of that mystery. God offered undeserved love to Paul, the secret, and Paul wanted to let everyone know what the secret was. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul says this, he says, For I am the least of the apostles. Who I, who I am not worthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. And Paul thought his sin was, was so bad with God that he thought God wouldn't, wouldn't want anything to do with him. But God, but God and his grace captivated Paul and it compelled Paul to become a messenger of the greatest news ever, the greatest story ever told, the highest theme anyone could ever hear, that in Jesus Christ, you are chosen, adopted, predestined, redeemed, forgiven, co-heirs, members of the same body. You all, Jew and Gentile, are now one in Christ. It's evident here that Christ is everything to Paul. And Paul couldn't keep quiet about it. In fact, the mystery demanded his ministry. Now, you're probably thinking, what are the unsearchable riches of Christ. Well, it's impossible to us to know because they're unsearchable, but we do know that anything and everybody that is in Christ, you have everything. Colossians chapter 2 verse 9 says, in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily and you are complete in him. So Christ is, is fully God. And so if you are a believer in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have everything in him. Actually, in chapter 1, remember we are given all the spiritual blessings. We're given all the spiritual blessings. And so in him, we are enriched. Church as followers of Jesus, we should always be moving and moving towards looking and looking like Christ. We should be improving. We should be developing. We should be growing deep in our knowledge. And all of that is enrichment. Jesus never impoverishes, but enriches. And so when we seek first his kingdom, we be, and we, we will become more like him in everything that we do in our mind, how we talk. And our deeds. So far, we've seen Paul uh, humble about his role. He's been privileged to be a messenger of this mystery. Now, we're, we're going to see a little bit just like what, the whole reason why this is. Now, in verse 9, it says, To bring light to everyone, what is the plan of this mystery hidden for ages, who God created all things? Verse 9, to bring the light for everyone, what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things? And so apart from Christ, just to, just to give us a kind of a bigger picture, apart from Christ, we all walk in darkness. We're separated from God. There's a chasm between us and God. But in Christ, who is light, who is sent by God to this world, is revealed the mystery that was once hidden which is now available to, to the Jews and, and Gentiles. And so the, what, what Paul is saying here is like, man, the, the reason is, is to bring the light to everyone. What was the plan? So this has been the plan all along. God designed this long ago. We talked about it in chapter one. And he has just been waiting for the right time. And right now, that is it. Jesus Christ coming to earth, dying on the cross, and ascending back into heaven. Now Paul is a messenger of that mystery. The mystery that was once hidden, which is now revealed. The mystery that was once a secret is now known. The mystery that was once exclusive, now it's inclusive. It's inclusive. 
Paul is convinced Jesus, about, about Jesus. He's convinced about who he is and his work. And although he sees himself as the lowest of all saints, Paul couldn't keep quiet about it. He saw the light and he understood the, the mystery. And he couldn't keep it to himself. He didn't monopolize it. He didn't look to capitalize it and make money in any way. He proclaimed it. And he shaped his life so much so that he would be a messenger of that mystery. Church, all revealed truth is held in our stewardship. Everything that has been revealed to us, the mystery, is given to be shared. It is told to be retold. It is no longer a mystery. It's now revealed. It's out in the open. We cannot keep quiet. We cannot hide it. We cannot stow it away and only bring it out when our friends come over or maybe just on Sundays. No, it's the truth. It's the greatest news of all time. And we can't keep quiet about it. And that's why Paul says, hey, the whole reason is, is to bring the light to everyone, to let everybody in on the secret. But there's a deeper purpose here. There's a deeper purpose here. Now, you may be asking, like, there, there's, there's a bigger purpose here? There's, there's, there's something deeper here, Pete? What, what, what are you talking about? There, there's more than just being on mission to proclaim the mystery, the mystery of, of God? Like, what, what, what is that? Now, is, it, is, is the whole purpose we, we proclaim the mystery, is the purpose of that so that folks would hear the truth? Yes. So that folks would see Jesus and believe in Jesus as their Lord and Savior? Yes. Is it so that folks would see the mystery and be in awe and understand that they are heirs and partakers of, of, of Christ? Yes. All those are the purpose. And those are great reasons why. But there's more. There's more. You see, from the beginning from the beginning in the, the letter in Ephesians, Paul has been building a case. He's been point, going, going in this direction to show us really the purpose of us together. You see, in the beginning, we saw God's story. And now he's, he's, he's inserted his role in God's story as the messenger. And he was like, man, together as one, what, what's the purpose of that? What's the purpose of us, of the Jew and Gentile being one, being equal, being reconciled to God and being reconciled to each other? Like, what's the purpose there? Look at verse 10. So that through the church, so that through the church, so that through the church, the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. So that through the church, the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. Paul wanted individuals to see and grasp the, the mystery personally. But when they see that, they would see that they have become one. That, that, that together we have become a community. Even better, together we have become the church. And the role the, in, in this church, uh, of the church, the role of the church in this world is, is scary. Like it's scary. God gives us a high standard. He gives us a task that is like when you think about it, it's, it's scary. Look, read it again. So that through the church, the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities and the heavenly places. Think about that, you guys. Like how is God revealing his power to everyone? How is God's wisdom being displayed to the world? How are the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places supposed to see the power of God in play, which includes angels, everyone? And how does the world see God's infinite and boundless wisdom? How, how does the world see grace lived out? How does the world see reconciliation lived out? Specifically, racial reconciliation. How does the world see the love of God being played out? here on earth. 
verse 10, through the church. To the church. The mystery is that we are both, a Jew and Gentile are now one, heirs, partakers of, of, of Christ. And so that through the church, through the church, the world will see the wisdom, the boundless wisdom of God. So when the world needs wisdom on marriage, God's plan is through the church. When the world needs wisdom on raising children, God's plan through the church. When the world needs wisdom on racial re reconciliation, God's plan through the church. When the world needs wisdom on handling money or, or healthy conflict or anything like that, God's plan through the church. And the church is you and I. Together. Now you may be asking, okay, how, how, do, how do the people really see this through the church? Well, simple, by the fellowship of the Jews and the Gentiles as one. Specifically speaking, by the fellowship here in Sanger, our community of the church, of believers, specifically in our church, Sanger Bible, the world sees God's wisdom through how we fellowship with one another. How folks from all walks of life, socioeconomic differences, um, the ethnicities, uh, all the different ages, everyone from, from everywhere, all the different colors represented as the body of Christ. The world sees God's love, God's grace, God's wisdom through how we fellowship with each other, united as one, the church. Folks, this is why we have, this is why we've been just addressing the issues and the hard and tough topics that's been coming up uh, in our community, in our world, in our nation. None of this was to, to, to score in anybody. None of this was to, to promote a certain agenda. If anything, the only thing we wanted to promote, no, sorry, not if anything, the only thing we wanted to promote was the gospel story. Is to make it clear just our role as believers individually and together. And this is what Paul has been building up to in Ephesians so that through the church, the world will see God lived out and how we fellowship and how we love for each other and how we do conflict with one another. Like the idea would be that when people would, would, would see Sanger Bible uh, at, like live with each other, people would be scratching their head as, as if it's a mystery. Like what's going on over there? I see a bunch of people who, who man, why, why are they hanging out with her? Why, is, why are they hanging out with them? All because of the gospel. All because of Jesus Christ is why we are one as the church. Church, so please, the world is watching us. Man, and how are we responding? Now look at verse 7, uh, verse 11. All of this, everything that Paul's been talking about, this was according to the eternal purpose that he has realized in Christ Jesus our Lord. We saw that he chose us before the foundation of the world, that this was always on his heart to send his son as our savior. That was always the plan. And then verse 12, in him, in Christ, we have boldness and access with confidence through our faith in him before only the priest could have access into, into talking to God. Now, both Jews and Gentiles, because of Jesus Christ, we can access and have confidence in approaching God through his son, Jesus Christ. And then verse 13, it says, So I ask you, do not lose heart over what I'm suffering for, which is your glory. 
Man, the church in Ephesus, they're, they're worried about that, they're too, that they too are going to suffer. You see, Paul was in prison because he couldn't keep quiet. He couldn't shut up about the, the mystery. And, and that's how much the, the, the gospel means to Paul. Nothing will make him stop. And so some of the folks in Ephesus were like, man, I, I, I don't want to go down that route. And so he says, hey, man, like, don't lose heart. I'm good. I'm proclaiming the mystery here. I am good. There's two takeaways for us here in this text. One is personally. The other is corporately. One is personally. The other is is corporate. One, as believers in Jesus Christ, the mystery has been revealed to you. And you know the person and the work of Jesus Christ. You know who you are. The mystery has been shown to you. How, how are you stewarding the mystery? How are you doing as a messenger of the mystery? Who have, you, who have you revealed the mystery to lately? This week, take some time and to, just think through this. Am I stewarding the message that was given to me? The message that was revealed to me? Or am I disobeying God? Am I hiding the, mes- the mystery? Am I hiding the message that was revealed to me. Two, corporately, as a church, we are God's plan for his wisdom to be revealed to the world. So as the universal church, as Sanger Bible, how are we walking in peace with each other? How are we spurring each other on? Like, are we living a reconciled life within the church? Would any of our non-Christian friends walk in here, experience the body of Christ? Would any of our non-Christians walk in, experience Sanger Bible, and be in awe and want to be part of that? Church, we have done well. We could always do better. We can never get comfortable. The world is in need of the church to be exactly how God has designed the church. Let's pray. Father, I pray that the work of the Holy Spirit will continue to draw us together to you. I pray that this week we would answer just some of these hard questions. Like, man, am I, has has the message been revealed to me? Have I been hiding it? And if so, God, I, I pray that we could repent and be forgiven and turn from that and live a life of being a messenger of the good news. Father, I I pray for the church that as a whole, we could see just our role is to to be the revealed um, manifold of your wisdom, God, to the world. So I I pray that we we can see that, that as we we gather in our home churches, as we gather in in small pockets all over the community, even when we gather on, on Sunday, I pray that our fellowship would be genuine. Grace would be given to each other. And that we will love and live in accordance to the gospel, Jesus. So that the world may see you and be in awe of you and believe in you. Jesus, we pray this in your name. Amen. Your face is on
your face. 